G'day Lockie here. Today I'm excited to do an OSS unboxing on Linkerd2. So um, we, let's just dive in here and, and see what we got. So Linkerd2 is a service sidecar and service mesh for Kubernetes and other frameworks. Okay, fantastic. Let's take a look at what it does here. So we're in the world of service meshes and service sidecars. Let's take a look at what Linkerd2x does and how it goes about solving this problem. I'm going to get into the getting started here. And I actually just went through um, getting myself an ACS engine cluster up and running. So that's running. I have a 1.11 cluster and I just actually installed the CLI, but I haven't done anything else. So let's just go over here and take a look at what we got. Okay, so I have a three node cluster here, 1.11. Fantastic. Um, and I think Linkerd version, let's take a look at what we got there. Okay, yeah, so the client, obviously I haven't installed it. So let's do this check. Fantastic. Actually, I love these kind of things, right? These checks. It can do what it says it's going to do. All the checks are okay. Fantastic. So I shouldn't have any issues. Okay, and we're going to install it on the cluster. Fantastic. And it looks like, from what I just saw, there's another check. So if I just drop the pre. Ta da. Okay, so what actually has this done under the hood? Let's go and see what we got here. I'm going to bump the font. Okay, now this is just something I do to change context here. Kubectl get ns, kubectl, okay, so we have a link of D. Okay, so I'm going to get the pods there. I'll put a watch on that. Let's see what's happening. Okay, so I see I've got a controller, I've got a Grafana, I've got a Prometheus, and I've got a web, and things are still starting. And up the top, that's exactly what it's telling me. The Grafana pods are not ready. Fantastic, love this. Thank you, uh, Linkerd team, for giving me a tool that tells me what's going on here. Also interested in having a look at how many CRDs this is installing, but it's looking really lightweight. If that's all I have, a controller and a web interface and presumably some um, observability and, and monitoring here with Grafana, uh, Grafana and Prometheus. Okay, so kubectl will get the, the big question that's on everyone's lips. Uh, okay, no CRDs. Okay, no CRDs currently. Fantastic. So I have a vanilla cluster, no CRDs, and I've just started Linkerd. Okay, so um, I've done that. I'm going to launch this dashboard, Linkerd dashboard. See what that actually gets us. Okay, so what's it do? It looks like it starts up a service proxy here. Okay, so what can I see here? All the namespaces. I see one with a green tick here, which is the Linkerd namespace. So obviously the Linkerd system has the sidecar service mesh installed itself. So that's why I have some details here. Fantastic. So I believe I'm good to go here. Let's install the demo app. Oh, okay, also I can do a top. Let's see what that top gets us. Top, okay. It looks like I can see source, destination, and path. Okay, that's pretty cool. I can see count. So to the controller from the web, I can see some different paths. Okay, deploy web. Well, that's cool. Let's see what happens here. So let's go and deploy an app. All right. So curl the kubectl apply. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, looks like I've got a namespace here. Let's see what's going on. Get pods in this namespace. Okay, a bunch of stuff starting. Emoji, vote bot, voting, and web, and they're all up and running. Fantastic. And then I can go do a port forward. Okay, let me put the port forward in another little window here. I'll do an eval again. Uh, this is just for the purposes of getting that port forward up and running. Um, and let's grab this port forward. Presumably going through to the app. Yep, the web service there. And I'll open up. 80, 80 I think it was. Okay, voting app is up and running. Tap to vote for your favorite emoji. Uh-oh, for the sake of, okay. So this looks like it's demonstrating some kind of failure that I would otherwise not actually have any visibility into because obviously all the pods are up and running. I'm sure if I went to the Kubernetes dashboard, it would say that everything looks fine, but I have some higher level RPC based problem that's presenting here. Let's go and try a different one. Okay, so I can actually pick a different one. Okay, 
So just there's some error in the the RPCs there that I'm not that I cannot see currently. Okay. And when we installed this, if I look at service mesh, okay. Okay, it's saying you have not connected it. Okay, so presumably down here, okay, linkerd inject. Okay, so I needed to run and inject, which presumably puts that sidecar in place, that lightweight sidecar. Okay, so let's jump back. So obviously I have an app deployed. It's actually not, hasn't been deployed um, with linkerd2 at the moment. Um, okay, all right, so this looks like it's going to go and do an inject and an apply. So why don't we, in this middle window, we will leave that there. Actually, I'll send this to the background. And I will go ahead and do this apply. So what did that do? Okay, so it looks like it's running up the stack again, although this time I have two containers per pod, so it must have injected that sidecar for the data plane into all of these deployments and it's bubbled down into all these pods. Okay, so we should see this happen. It's up, it's running, and we're terminating the old existing pods. So I would imagine, oh, okay. So now I can actually see that the meshed status is four of four. It was zero of four before. I don't know if you noticed that. So actually I can start seeing a little bit of data here. Oh, wow, okay. Got a nice little view here, so we can actually see that we've got some direction. There's a vote bot here that must be just submitting votes to web. Web goes to emoji and web goes to voting. Okay. Right. What else can I see here? The deployments, the pods, and the authorities here. The interesting thing that I actually see is this. That this is actually at 89%. So everything. Voting's only at 88 to 89%. So I'm guessing this is a representation of that, that um, path I was hitting when I was actually voting for. Oh, I, did I stop? Did I actually stop the... Yes, let me go and... I did not want to do that. I will go and restart because I had... It's already in use. Because the pod flipped out from under my port forward. Let's try again. That was not anything else other than a port. Okay, so there I am again. So let's actually see what's going on here. So I can see that all of these paths are successful. What happens if I go and do this one again? Do I actually see where that's happening? Voting. Oh, there it was. Okay, so the vote poop, this path is not successful. Okay, all right, so what else can I actually do here? Well, this is great. Obviously, I've just put a sidecar in place, very lightweight, not done anything else to my app. Suddenly I have visibility and observability and some tracing on paths and routing and everything that's happening just out of the box without doing nothing. And, um, but injecting the sidecar, which is fantastic. So let me just keep going here and see what other goodies we have. Okay, so watch it run. We've deployed it, we can do it top. So I can do a stat on the deployment. That's pretty cool on the command line here. So we go. Okay, so I can see this is a representation of what I was seeing in the UI. That I see that voting has a lower RPS. I can do a top to dig in a little further. Okay, so I can see each individual destination, source, destination, and path. Fantastic. And tap. What is this? Ooh, that's very cool. So I can see down to in and out on each of these RPCs. And the status, wow, that's pretty powerful. Okay, so I can see the path, the statuses. Okay, and I'm guessing I could do that in the UI when I saw this little tap. Ooh, okay, so I can actually, it gives me the command to run, and I can run this real time. I can also run a top in here as well. Wow, this is fantastic. Right, okay, yeah. 
cool. So I can see everything just with that little addition there, the inject, I can actually see and get some visibility onto my app. So, you know, to kind of summarize and taking a very quick look at this lightweight look, um, it kind of looks like it's answering that I'm a service owner. How do I get visibility into my service by adding this, injecting it um, at, you know, whether I want to as the service owner or not, selectively app per app, you know, based on namespace or based on individual app, I can actually add specific apps to meshes and enable them on the mesh and start to get this visibility. So I think it's completely empowering for somebody um, who's an application owner. So that kind of perspective rather than, you know, other service meshes which look at kind of a platform. There is a platform that's running and you get on that platform. So I can selectively in, in Linkerd to actually say, I want my service to have observability, some telemetry here, some path routing. I can take a look and just by the simple running the inject and putting the sidecar in place, I, without any changes, had visibility onto where my app was actually broken, so then I could actually go and fix it. Um, and this must be incredibly um, liberating and powerful to get this, you know, at a glance and drill down into tap and top into what exactly the paths um, each of the data sources are hitting. Um, I saw kind of an inbound and outbound before I actually go. What does that mean? Okay, so I'll look at a deployment. Ooh, okay, so this is where that directional graph comes from. So I have inbound emoji vote is hitting the web. Okay. Okay. Inbound, and I guess um, if I go to voting, I would see inbound. Okay, yeah. And if I go to web, what do I see? Outbound. Okay, so I can see the inbound emoji voto coming in by the deployment called VoteBot and outbound I can see that this service is going to emoji end of voting and I can actually see that there's that voting endpoint that has an issue. Oh, what's this final goodie here? I see Grafana logo there. Oh, okay. So very nice little Grafana dashboards to represent success rate, failures, latency, success rate. Okay, fantastic. So this is a nice little addition as well. Um, I can actually at real time dig into all of these and get um, at a glance statistics here. Inbound connections, outbound connections, request rate, um, TCP metrics. Wow, that's very cool. So, you know, there you have it. I went from no service mesh to installing four deployments in a Linkerd namespace with one command with a pre-check and check in Linkerd. And then I took an app and bolted on a service sidecar there um, and gave visibility to this demo app, this Emoji Vote app. So I think it's a really interesting take. I'm really excited to see what happens with Linkerd2. And I like the fact that it's kind of um, service owner oriented. And then I as a service owner can actually choose um, when and where I want to add services to the mesh and how I want to do that. So congratulations on the launch, um, the folks over at Buoyant. And, uh, and thanks for joining. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and subscribe and like. Cheers.